Thank you. Today I'm going to talk you through the why, the how, the what, and then the challenges and the results of the veterinary protocols that we've implemented here in Victoria. The why. Nelly, the diva, the big O, the crusher, the man, the king, big red and old Jack. In most countries, horses are livestock, but they aren't here. The best horses in the country become household names alongside our human athlete superstars. They become national treasures and stories that are told generation after generation. Horses are characters, we humanise them and we give them pet names. You may recall the horses that I've just read out better by their racing names, like Caviar, Maccabi Diva, Octagonal, Bone Crusher, Manicado, Kingston Town, Farlap and Carbine. So injury is part of any sport. Having recently retired in November last year, quarterback Tom Brady injured his shoulder and said, I'll be right, it's football. So injury is part of every sport, but death is not. And this was felt firsthand in Australia and around the world on the day in 2014 when Philip Hughes was struck by a bouncer. Cricket fans around the world paid tribute to Hughes by putting their bats out. This visible tribute said, we all play cricket, but no one expects someone to die. The race that stops a nation. On Cup Day, racing invites everyone in. It's a sporting, cultural, social event viewed by 750 million people globally. And dead horses can't be part of our nation's great race. After the 2020 Melbourne Cup, the industry and the general public demanded change. The raw emotion that was felt by the industry and the general public was palpable. This emotion was a culmination of a number of incidents over the years and not solely what had happened just in the Melbourne Cup. This was not acceptable and more needed to be done to ensure that our international horses returned home safely. We've heard numerous speakers call out racing's challenges and social acceptability is one of those and we had the unenviable task of feeling that firsthand. So what did we do? A review, which was led by our Executive General Manager of Integrity Services, Jamie Steer, and also included members of our veterinary team, equine welfare team and racing team, along with members of RV's, um, along with some independent uh, experts, including VRC, Director and Godolphin Managing Director Vin Cox, uh, leading champion Chris Waller, who you heard from this morning, and internationally renowned regulatory vet Dr David Sykes. The objective was to provide clear recommendations to enhance the safety and welfare of international horses competing here in Victoria and also all horses competing in the Melbourne Cup. An extensive consultation was conducted we spoke with more than 65 local and international trainers, jockeys, race clubs, track managers and veterinarians, and we thank everyone who participated in the review and gave their time and consideration. And what did we find? That there were many contributing factors and therefore no single recommendation would significantly reduce the risk of injury. Rather, we needed a combination of recommendations each contributing to reduce the risk of injury. So what did we do? A consistent theme of stakeholder feedback was they wanted to see substantive, meaningful and visible change to address the high rate of injuries that we were seeing in international horses and in the Melbourne Cup. We took important steps to reduce the risk of injury. We don't apologise for making these decisions to safeguard horse welfare and safety. We built on our existing protocols. We enhanced both pre-travel and pre-race veterinary inspections for international horses. Notably, we incorporated 
mandatory screening using advanced diagnostic imaging of all international horses pre-travel and pre-race. In addition, all runners in the Melbourne Cup also underwent mandatory screening using diagnostic imaging. Community expectations vary globally. They're constantly evolving and changing. It was very important to us that all participants, both local and international, understood what was expected here locally and the role that they played in protecting horse safety and welfare. When in doubt, leave him out. No topic has gathered more attention and publicity than the diagnosis, management and long-term effects of concussion. So on to the challenges. Communication. While we did receive vocal feedback, particularly from those stakeholders that were negatively affected, a balanced assessment would be that we had mixed feedback from our stakeholders. There's a general understanding of why the protocols were introduced, but definitely um, a feeling that these new protocols introduce a greater level of complexity for international horses participating here. And I can absolutely guarantee that these protocols were definitely not introduced to restrict international competition, which we value greatly. They're in place to make sure that these international horses get home safely. Relationships is another one. Building and maintaining relationships with international stakeholders has its challenges. Distance, time differences, infrequent communications, and in some cases, language barriers. The intense media scrutiny, particularly around the veterinary protocols and the results of various testing, have become an unwelcome burden for our participants, particularly the trainers and owners, both here locally and internationally. The decision-making process, communicating the results and the process to stakeholders and the general public is another challenge we face. And during the first year, the unthinkable happened and our CT unit broke down. COVID hampered us uh, efforts getting parts into the country quickly uh, to repair it. And so to build resilience into the system, we've per recently purchased a second CT scanner which will not only give uh, robustness to our system, but also will help increase year-round access to this technology for our participants, which is also made even more accessible by RV's Medicare for Horses program. And so the result. As one of the world's most recognised horse races, and one that holds a unique place in Australia's psyche, it was really essential that the Lexus Melbourne Cup met the highest standards when it comes to equine welfare and safety. The initiatives we introduced set a new global benchmark. We're committed to continuous improvement and we're continually assessing the impacts that these changes have made, monitoring innovations and advancements in science, technology and research. And so we're two years in and we haven't had any serious or fatal injuries in our international horses or any horses competing in the Melbourne Cup. This has improved public confidence and the social acceptance of horse racing here in Victoria. Because injury is part of sport and death is not. And because horses are what is really special about horse racing. And in the words of Winston Churchill, there's something about the outside of a horse that is good for the inside of a man or woman, as the case may be. Thank you.